Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready for today's broadcast? Come on, join me now as we call for that daily bread. Hey, from Jesus, praise God. Say with me, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread. Jesus said to me, ask and it shall be given. And he said also to ask you, Lord, give me this day my daily bread. So, Lord, I receive it right now in faith in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Miracles are taking place in your life. Miracles of provision is taking place in your life. Praise God. And Father, we all know you today for this broadcast. Thank you, Lord. I pray for everyone watching, listening to me right now. And I declare burdens are being lifted from them. Yokes are being destroyed right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I speak life into your being right now. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. We are talking about who is Jesus. So amazing. The more, the more I, I, I study these things, the more I meditate on these things, I keep realizing how little we know about the one we've talked about for so many years. You see, it's so easy to get distracted from what's the most important thing. Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he's done a lot of good things. He's done many miracles. He's seen lots of manifestations of God's spirit. He's been to many places preaching. He suffered many things. But then, He began to, I want to show you something here. Philippians chapter 3. He began to review these things and he came to one conclusion. Well, let me read from verse 7. He said, but what things were gain to me? These I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is true faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed unto his death, if by any means I may attain the resurrection of the dead. Now, you see, I showed you this thing. There are two parts to this thing, and I need to explain something to you. Because for many years, we, we see these things, we confess these things, we love the passion of these things, but then we don't realize when, you know, the same thing we do today. You know, a preacher is speaking out of passion, and we love it, we enjoy it, but we don't know when he crosses the line according to truth. And we just follow all the way because we trust the person. Now, listen, Paul was speaking here and says, look, I count everything that was gained to me, I, I count them as loss. Why? Because I want to gain the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Then he began to talk and say, look, I, I you know, hmm. thank you, Holy Spirit. You need to understand when people speak, 
You need to understand where they are. You remember in literature, those of you that did a bit of literature, you don't have to, do, to go too deep in it. Even in secondary school literature, you would, come, you would have come across this phrase in questions. They will put a quote and they will say, who said this? To whom? And on, to who and on what occasion? You see, the part of that um, question that is very important is the on what occasion. Because many times we read things in scriptures and we just take it like that without understanding the occasion it was spoken. For example, like the mistake we, we made when, when pros, the prosperity message began to hit the church. And then we began to quote scriptures like money answered all things. And we use it to inspire Christians why they have to have money. So we say money answered all things. Now, of course, money is good. But that statement, and you see, when we say it, we say it like that is what God said. Even God said money answered all things. But hey, it wasn't God that said it, number one. Number two, the occasion on, on which that statement was made, it was not for encouragement. It was not for edification. It was a rebuke. It was a rebuke. But now because we don't, we don't look carefully at those things, you just take that and begin to, Father, your word says money answereth all things. Therefore, I receive money in the name of Jesus. And all the angels are looking at you with their surprised look. You know, like, huh? Where? Because God never said so. That is against God's wisdom to say money answers all things. It's against God's wisdom. Because that's not true. And then we say, the Bible says money is a defense. Yeah, there's a phrase like that in scriptures. But that's not what the Bible says. Now, when we say the Bible says, when we quote like that, we are not just quoting a line. We are quoting the wisdom of God. See, when, when, we, when we're dealing with issues and we say the Bible says, you see, and that's why many times believers don't get results because they quote what God have never said. The fact that it's a phrase in the Bible doesn't make it qualified to say the Bible said. I, I want you to understand, when you are dealing with warfare, when you are dealing with issues, your, your words, every word you speak matters. If you are not speaking truth, you won't get the desired result, no matter how righteous and holy you feel. If your words don't line up with what he has said, you would, the Bible says if we pray according to his will. He hears us. And if he hears us, we, if we know that he has heard us, then we know we have our petitions granted. Meaning, if you pray against his will, or if you pray not in accordance to his will, he doesn't hear you. He doesn't hear you because of emotions. He doesn't hear you because you're crying. So you go there and say, Father, you said money, I said all this. Oh God, give me this money. And nobody's hearing you. So it's not about him making a decision whether to give you or not to give you. He doesn't even hear you. Why? Because he never said money answered all things. He never said money is a defense. The scripture says wisdom is a defense and money is a defense. He brought a comparison. And then he now said the excellency of Knowledge, in other words, the more, the more perfect way to reason is that wisdom gives life. Money doesn't give life. So what, what, what's the wisdom of God saying? The wisdom of God saying, you put money, put wisdom, take, more, take wisdom, not money. But because we don't understand these things, see the same thing we do with Jesus. Look at this scripture now we just read in Philippians chapter 3. You, 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 you know, we keep reading and say, oh, that I make gain Christ and be found in him not having my own righteousness which is from the law but that which is true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ according to um, the, the righteousness which, which is from God by faith now he now goes on to say in verse 10 that I may know him and the power 
of his resurrection. Good. And the fellowship of his suffering. Mm. Being conformed to his death. There might be some truth to that. But then the understanding that he goes on to say, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Now, he is saying, I want to know Jesus to the point where I, I want to die like he died and see if by any means I would resurrect. Now, that's not needed. Do you know that? That's not needed. Why do I say it's not needed? Because Jesus died the death. And he didn't send us to go taste death like him. He didn't. But you see, statements like these fuel those things that influences matter though. But the statements are wrong. They are not in accordance to truth. And this may be hard meat to chew, I know. But truth is truth. It doesn't matter how many years you have believed something else. And also understand, most, I don't know if you can accept this now. Most of the letters Paul wrote, you know that already. He wrote them from prison. And it's amazing to know that most of those years, Paul was not functioning in his office. I so said, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Paul was in Jerusalem for many years in prison. Because God told him not to go to Jerusalem. He disobeyed the Lord. And he went to Jerusalem. And then you need to wonder why all those years in Jerusalem, God never delivered him from prison. Now, this was the same Paul that was locked up in prison in Philippi. And that very night they were locked up, him and Silas, they began to praise and worship God and pray and then the prison doors opened their chains fell and they were actually <laughs> opportune to walk out of that prison if they wanted and paul was bold enough to say i'm not going anywhere because because i've got to clean my name according to the law in this city because because it was by law we were sent to prison so by law we will be brought out so he told everyone don't go stay where you are Think about it. Just one night, the very night he was locked up in prison, an angel showed up and opened all the prison door, broke all the chains. And then he got to Jerusalem and he got locked up and he was there for years and years and years and years and years. No deliverance came in. And soon Paul began to adjust. He began to adjust to the system. He began to adjust to prison life. He began to adjust and make himself useful. Which is a good thing, patience. But you need to ask yourself, why didn't God send deliverance for you? And to make matters worse. Now, I pray, but I'm going to still tell you the truth. Because for some, it will trigger off thoughts in your mind that will open you up for the Holy Ghost to minister more truths to you. So Paul, in those years didn't really have an encounter with God until one time when he heard the voice of God say to him you will stand before oh, I think that was even and I need to confirm that but the moment Paul was taken out of Jerusalem and being transported, the moment they got into the Gentile region, 
And now you hear Paul say, an angel stood beside me tonight, saying to me. So most of these writings of Paul, he wrote them the occasion, that's why I quoted that literature, the occasion in which he wrote most of these things are not his best moments. So be careful when he writes his situation into his faith. So when you study, you need the Holy Spirit to help you decipher and say, no, this is not for you. You say, even Paul's writing? Yes, even Paul's writing. I know many of you believe in the Paul's doctrine. I believe a lot of things Paul said to you. But through the Holy Spirit, I began to see that, hey, it's not everything you just take. Because the Holy Spirit is still your teacher. Our time is up for today. But you need to understand these things. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.